Hey all, this is Pradesh Chaudhary, your quantum guru. In this video, we will learn what is an imaginary number, their history, what is a complex number and what was the necessity to invent complex numbers and what purpose do they cater to. The today's modern science position would not be where it is right now without the complex number. What is this? This is a famous psi, the trident-like structure, the wave function. At the very core of quantum physics, there is this wave function. Wave function is a complex number, but when a wave function is multiplied by a complex conjugate, we get a real physical thing called probability density of wave function. Imagine a world without complex number. In that world, complex physics would not exist. Complex numbers can be represented as a vectors. Using complex numbers, we can easily perform operations like addition, subtractions of vectors. Complex number can be used to represent simple harmonic motion. Using complex numbers, we can easily superpose simple harmonic motions. They are also very useful tools in uh, studying alternating currents. Now let's try to understand the need to develop imaginary number. For that, consider this quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Here a, b, c are constant but a is not equal to 0. Its roots are uh, x is equal to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. Uh, we call b square minus 4ac is equal to its discriminant. So I can write x is equal to minus b plus minus square root of d divided by 2a. So d is the discriminant. So this is a quadratic equation y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c. I want to make a plot of y versus x. Important consideration in plotting a graph is its slope. A slope of this graph is uh, dy by dx. So dy by dx is 2ax plus b. And the slope of slope and the rate of change of slope with respect to x or the second derivative of y with respect to x. d2y by dx square is 2a. Obviously, y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c is a parabola. Important point of a parabola is uh, its vertex. At the vertex, the slope dy by dx is 0. So, equating dy by dx to 0, I will get the x coordinate of the vertex that is uh, x equal to minus p by 2a. Putting this x coordinate into this equation, I will get the y coordinate of the vertex that is uh, y is equal to minus d by 4a where d is the discriminant b square minus 4ac. So I will get the vertex x comma y of this parabola equal to minus p by 2a comma minus d by 4a. Now consider a special case in which a is 0 and d is less than 0. So in this case the y coordinate of the vertex would be positive, d is negative, 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 positive and a is also positive, so that would be positive. So in that case, this parabola is axis parallel to y axis and this opens upwards and the vertex is above x axis uh, like this. This is a vertex, this is a x coordinate here. What I am more interested in the y coordinate, this y coordinate is positive minus d by 4. So the roots of this ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 can be obtained graphically by plotting y1 is equal to ax square plus bx plus c and y2 is equal to 0. And the roots of this equation ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 are the x corners of the points of intersection of y1 is equal to ax square plus bx plus c and y2 is equal to 0. So this is that I am talking about now for the case a greater than 0 and d less than 0. For that that is the parabola, this is the vertex, d is positive. So this is the uh, graph y1 ax square plus bx plus c and y2 is this line. So we are not getting any point of intersection. So in this case uh, we will not get any roots of this equation ax square plus bx plus c when d is less than 0 because we are not getting any real intersection. So thus a quadratic equation with negative discriminant doesn't have real roots. So whenever a negative quantity comes inside a square root we will say square root is not meant to put 
a negative number inside it like we say 1 by 0 is not defined because in that case quadratic equation discriminant becomes 0 then the solution a negative comes negative quantity comes inside the square root and we are not getting the real root so we can say that uh, you cannot put negative quantity inside a square root and we can get away with that. Now consider this general cubic equation ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d is equal to 0. a, b, c and d are constant and a is not equal to 0. Its roots are very cumbersome, There's something like that. I love working on general equations and their general solutions rather than specific equations by giving some numerical values to a, b, c and d. But I can't think in my dreams to work with this general equation, but there is a way. This general cubic equation ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d is equal to 0 can be reduced to equation x cube minus 3px minus 2q p and q are constant by some suitable substitution. So this is indeed a lot easier one term has reduced. And its solution is also very easy. So this question once again x cube minus 3px minus 2q is equal to 0. The roots of this cubic equation are infinitely easier compared to the general equation. So and its roots are x is equal to p divided by cubic root of square root of q square minus p cube plus q plus cubic root of square root of q square minus p q plus q. Let's take a special case in which q is equal to 0 and p is equal to 3. Basically, I want a simple equation in which there is some negative quantity inside the square root. So, putting this q is equal to 0 and p is equal to 3 in this equation, the equation 1 will be reduced to uh, x q minus 9x is equal to 0. And that is a simple cubic equation uh, taking a x out common I will get x into x square minus 9 and that would be x minus 3 into x plus 3. So I will get 3 real roots of the equation x cube minus 9x equal to 0 uh, the real roots are x equal to 0 x equal to minus 3 and x equal to plus 3. Let's solve that graphically too. Graphically, the roots of x cube minus 9x equal to 0 can be obtained by plotting y1 is equal to x cube and y2 is equal to 9x. The roots of the equation x cube minus 9x equal to 0 are the x coordinates of the points of intersection of the two curves. So, here is the uh, y1 is equal to x cube and this is the y2 is equal to 9x and these are the three real points of intersection. And uh, this x coordinate of here is 0, so x equal to 0 is a root. Here the x coordinate of the point of intersection is 3, so x equal to 3 is a root. And here the x equal to minus 3 is also a root. So graphically too, we are getting 3 roots, x equal to 0, x is equal to plus 3 and x equal to minus 3. Once again, we have equation x cube minus 9 x equal to 0. It's a real root square x equal to 0 minus 3 plus 3. In case of directly solving the equation uh, either directly or by graphically I want to put uh, q is equal to 0 and p is equal to 3 into this equation. So when I put q is equal to 0 and p is equal to 3 into equation 2 I uh, will get this. So here I am getting negative quantity inside the square root. So there is a dichotomy the direct solution is giving real roots. But in general solution inside the square root, there is a negative number. We avoided this confrontation of the quadratic equation by saying that negative quantities are not allowed inside square root. But now we can't just get away by saying that. This dichotomy was removed by Cardano. Cardano was first to introduce complex number in algebra. In his book Ars Magma in chapter 37, he worked on a problem. The problem was to divide 10 into two parts, the product of which is 40, i.e. Uh, a plus b is 10 and ab is equal to 40. So what are the values of a and b? We know that 
if sum of two number is a constant their product is maximum when they are equal so a and b the maximum product of a b if sum of a and b is 10 would be 25 and a and b both are equal to 5 so the maximum product a b if the sum is 10 can be 25 but they are asking the sum of a and b is 10 and their product is 40 so that is not possible but cardano work like this cardano divided 10 to equal parts getting 5 each squaring them getting 25 and subtract 40 get minus 15 and if i take the square root of minus 15 and from that if i add 5 and subtract we'll get 5 and square root of minus 5 plus square root of minus 15 and 5 minus square root of minus 15 so cardano got two solutions a is equal to 5 plus minus root 15 and b is equal to 5 minus square root of minus 15 if i add these two i will get obviously 10 this can be thought of a c plus d and uh, c minus d so if i multiply a into b i will get c square minus d square c square is 25 and d square is minus 15 so 25 minus minus 15 would be 40 so that would be an answer to this problem Cardano told that there can be negative number inside the square root and the manipulation would give a real number. Raphael Bombelli authored a great book, L Algebra. In that book, Bombelli introduced a notation for a square root of minus 1 and he called it Pew D Menno. But it was Rémy Descartes who coined the term imaginary number for square root of minus 1. And then we have many more mathematicians who work on the concept iota i or iota square root of minus 1 to work on the complex number and many manipulation of that now that we have a new type of number called an imaginary number combining it with a real number gives a complex number so this z is equal to x plus iota y iota is square root of minus 1 is a complex number z is a complex number z is the element of the set c this is a set of complex numbers x is a real number and this x is called the real part of this complex number z and uh, i iota y is the imaginary part and here y is a real number but iota y is a complex number so now we can represent complex number in a plane called uh, complex plane suppose if we have a complex number z is equal to x plus iota y this x is the real part and y is the imaginary part. So iota y is the imaginary part. So this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. So this is a complex number z is equal to x plus iota y. So this is a imaginary part and this is a real part. This is how we can represent a complex number in a complex plane called complex number in polar form. This is the Euler's equation e power iota theta is equal to cos theta plus iota sin theta. Consider the circle of unit length centered at the origin. A vector having length 1 angle theta from the real axis. It will have a component parallel to imaginary axis equal to sin theta and component parallel to the real axis equal to cos theta. So if this dot is represented by a complex number, it's a real part would be cos theta and imaginary part would be sin theta. So this dot can be represented as a complex number cos theta plus iota sin theta. And this thing is equal to e power iota theta. So whenever we will have a complex number e power iota theta. So it's a length is equal to 1 that is a 1 into e power iota theta. So its length is 1, 1 unit and its direction is at an angle theta from the real axis. Now consider this complex number e power iota pi by 2. So this complex number has a length 1 and its uh, direction is from pi by 2 or radian or 90 degree from the real axis so that would come here. 
and that will on solving will give me iota so e power iota pi by 2 is simply iota and that would be here it's a uh, angle from the real axis 90 degree and length is equal to one unit now coming to this equation where we had a problem where we had a dichotomy the graphical solution or the direct solution was giving a real roots but on putting this equation the original equation was x cube minus 9x equal to 0 on putting the general solution the q is equal to 0 and p is equal to 3 we were getting x equal to 3 by cubic root of square root of minus 29 and plus uh, cubic root of square root of minus 29 so here uh, to simplify the thing let me just write uh, square root of minus 29 so I am getting only the principal roots otherwise if I take something outside the square root we will get uh, two solutions so just I am checking one solution so square root of minus 27 is square root of 27 into square root of minus 1 and that is iota so that would be here on bringing it outside I am only taking the positive root so that is a 3 root 3 iota And simplifying this, I can write it 3 power 3 by 2 iota. So simplify this, that whole thing, this is 3 and that whole thing is 3 power 3 by 2 iota. And then there is a cubic root. So uh, cubic root of 3 power 3 by 2 iota, power 1 by 3 and same thing, that whole thing is here. Further simplify this, simplifying this further, I will get that thing would be a uh, 3 divided by 3 power 1 by 2 this is 3 by 2 power 1 by 3 that will be 3 power 1 by 2 into iota power 1 by 3 and the same thing would this will also become further simplifying i'll get 3 power 1 by 2 into iota power minus 1 by 3 and 3 power 1 by 2 iota power 1 by 3 so take uh, 3 power 1 by 2 common i'll get iota power minus 1 by 3 plus iota power 1 by 3 and iota power 1 by 3 using Euler's equation would be uh, iota is e power iota pi by 2 and that power 1 by 3 would give me e power iota pi by 6 and uh, that would be cos pi by 6 plus iota sine pi by 6 and that would be uh, root 3 by 2 plus 1 by 2 iota and similarly I can write for e power minus 1 by 3 will get uh, root 3 by 2 minus 1 by 2i so if i put this into here here so that is a 3 power 1 by 2 and iota power 1 by 3 plus iota power minus 1 by 3 i will get root 3 so this thing basically the one of the root i've got 3 and that is a real root so using iota that is the imaginary number with the combination of imaginary number we can get a real number so finally on concluding this video i can say that we now have a number as a complex number which is a superset of all numbers a big takeaway message from this video is that you can have a real outcome from seemingly unreal things